eFlight Expo, making aviation greener since 2009. Uh, yes, as we are a bit in delay with our first presentation, uh, the technic wasn't here at the moment. Um, we just wait. They were also going to do uh, an announcement, uh, and we will record this session, and it will be on our YouTube channel like every year. Um, so, uh, oh. <laughs> so maybe. The, One, two, three. Uh, the next one. And like uh, we are a little bit stressed, like always, we have uh, a lot of appointments, a lot of things going on here on the show. So we'll start right away. Um, it's the subject today is what is the um, what is the uh, future of electric aviation when it's coming? And we have here today for the speaker which have experience getting electric aviation into the air and they are very soon or already have launched their products so there are some of the products you already can buy now some has been certified uh, we have uh, Voltaero Jean Botti you see his aircraft in the A7 here right at the beginning we have uh, actually we see all aircraft from all the presenters are here um, and so I had the word, the parole to uh, Jean Botti a little. This is what we are doing. We are doing presentations, magazines, and organize forums on electric aviation. So stay tuned. And with this, I give the word to Jean, and the next presentation should come. Here is it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, good morning. <clears throat> uh, should I? Uh, I think he's coming up. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, can you put the full screen, please? Ah, no, I'm sorry, okay, I got it. Okay, good morning. So I wanted to show you briefly uh, about uh, Voltero. Uh, <clears throat> we're making, you know, uh, an aircraft that you can see here. That is from uh, uh, 4 to 12 passengers. But the first one that we're in the middle of certification with is the, the, the four or five seats. Uh, it's parallel hybrid propulsion. We will come into a second into this. And uh, it's, it's got, uh, like I said, capabilities to go up to 12 people. And uh, our system is patented today in 62 countries. So um, <clears throat> briefly here are the founders, uh, Marina that is here, myself and Didier who is the test pilot and technical director that is flying out today from France to here. The, the, our proof of concept is coming over the, uh, tonight and it will be exposed in this hall uh, after 6 p.m. so you will have a chance to see it. It's been flying for three and a half years now. So uh, our story starts in 2011 with a small creek. -cree. This is, was all DDA flying it and it was uh, flying in Le Bourget with 20 kilowatts. Moved into crossing the channel, it was the first electric airplane, commercial kind, that crossed the channel in 2015. At the time I was a CTO of Airbus for these two airplanes. And then we moved, in, and that was 60 kilowatt, and now we moved to 600 kilowatt. So the technology that we'll show, we'll fly tonight coming over here, 600 kilowatts and capable already of carrying 12 people. So uh, the heart of the concept, is the fact that we have a pearl hybrid, electric, and also uh, mechanical, and you can use it obviously separately or together. All takeoff and landings are electric. And then if you have a short flight, it can be all electric, or when you want to extend the range, it's capable of three and a half hours of, of, of flight, you extend the range doing hybridization. So you have a very high safety with this because it's a dual source of energy. So let me show you, this is when you are in 100% electric, obviously. So one propeller, and you can see the plane, it's exposed right here, outside. And then, when you go hybrid, you use both energies, okay, going to the propeller. 
all the secret obviously resides there eh? at, the, at the power trade thermal engine and the, 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 the power from electric engine and that's our pattern there and then you go in flight charging if you need to because if you do commercial operation and you need to take off and land and start again with electric power by night for example if you have some applications you have to do it you know by recharging the batteries and this is 100% thermal if you have any problems in your system uh, for example electric shutdown or battery problem you can fly no problem, elect, um, pure thermal. So this is what our technology is capable of doing and you can see tonight when it will come over here because it's a proven technology that has been flying now for almost five, four years. This is a typical cycle, you know, from ANSI to NIS with how we use it, you know, take off, landing, electric, approach, then you got, you know, in-flight light hybrid where we you maximize the fuel economy. So it's not only a question of CO2 reduction here, it's a question of noise reduction and it's a question overall of safety in, in flight. So uh, this is at uh, the art of the concept, you know. What you see tonight coming is not an uh, optimized uh, aerodynamics. What you see here today is optimized aerodynamics. 50% more efficiency, which is very important. And obviously today, why did we pick a hybrid? You know, before we, do, we did two electric aircrafts, it's simply a question of practicality. Batteries today, at the state of the art of today, are not yet, you know, enough power energy to be able to fly, you know, in a long distance. So hybrid for us is the solution. You can do it with in fact, I show you with the concept of Casio S here. This is the one that comes tonight. And the latest and greatest of this one, it has been flying with uh, biofuel uh, made of 100% uh, you know, waste of uh, grapes. So the combination of that plus our electric takeoff and land got us already 82% CO2 reduction on a flight of one hour. And that's what you will see demonstrated on flights on Saturday here. So that's the Casio S. We call it S. You see, 224 flights, 15,000 kilometers already, more than 165 hours of flights. So that's the base of all what we're doing for the one that is on certification right now, which is the Casio 330. The Casio 330 is made for regional mobility. So, single, it's a single operation, only one pilot. This one, 330, stands for 330 kilowatts, you know, and uh, it's got, you know, uh, up, a range up to 150 kilometers in pure electric, but when you do hybrid, you can go 1200 kilometers. Max speed, 180 knots. That's the one we're gonna certify first, and that's the one that is exposed here in our stand. Then you go to the 480, this one will have a retractable landing gear. It will be really suited for little commercial operations, 480 kilowatts, and then you go 200 knots with this one compared to the Casio 330. And it's pressurized, so it will be able to do any kind of operations. And then you got the 600 for 12 people. And the power of this one is the same power that the one that comes flying tonight. Uh, that you know uh, will be able to carry up to 12 people with certification you know by the end of 2027 beginning of 2028 so I wanted to show you some pictures of uh, what we have on, on coming here like I said reduction of noise pollution use of biofuel and then we have uh, you see on the stand we have two motors from Kawasaki two engine excuse me that uh, are already prepared for hydrogen. And we're planning, planning to have a demonstrator, electric hydrogen, by 2025, on uh, you know, coming soon. So that's what we will uh, test, our next step, so that we're ready when the technology and when the, the, I would say the hydrogen economy is ready, we will be able to apply it to our aircraft. In fact, this is the engine 6-cylinder that you can see out, out there that is the first prototype from Kawasaki that can run out of hydrogen okay? 
So, I'm gonna skip this, we have a lot of partners, you can see it over there in our stand, uh, but there are some significant people like Safran, Kawasaki, you know, and uh, Luke Ellis, uh, a very specific new blade, low, low noise, uh, low RPM. And if we dive into a little bit more into this aircraft, you can go and visit, you know, the, the inside, it's right here, a fuselage. Uh, it's done for multiple applications, you know. <coughs> It's got the possibility to have you know, five seats, okay? Uh, you can also go to six seats because you could have a foldable one that you put, you know, just behind the pilot. It's got, uh, it's quiet, you know? Uh, it's got uh, very good different applications. In fact, I'm gonna show you that right now. See, you could have a, a disabled person going in because it's a large door. You know, and so it's a, it's a very nice, uh, I would say, application for, for people with reduced mobility. Already the small one, eh? the one that is here. Uh, you can put a disabled, I mean, a sick person uh, with the nurse and the doctor. It, it, you can have a stretcher going in there. Uh, if you remove the, 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 the back seat and just put a, a single seat operation with a, a nurse there. But you can also do cargo. Okay, you remove all the seats and you have uh, cargo operations because the door is big enough to allow you to put some stuff, you know, to go from one island to another one. So those are kind of uh, operations. I'm going to skip some of this. And one thing important that you can see here, this is the quantum avionics suite of Avi9, 14 inches, 14 inches each one of the screens and 4K definition. I encourage you to go inside and see it because it's a very nice, you know, definition that is in there. This is the first that we have been showing here in Friedrichshafen. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to go and, and take a look because it's it's in there. So this is the um, the image of our plane, complete because here we only have the fuselage, but the complete aircraft is like this. There is a little mock up that shows you how the aircraft is going to look like. And, to conclude, we are building a brand new plant in Rochefort, France, south, southwest, that is going to be 3,000 square meters, it's almost finished, in July it will be completely finished, and it will produce 150 airplanes a year, in, when we are in, at cruise state, so that's uh, how we are going to progress on this, with a certification, like I said, by the end of 2025 and production in 2026. Thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, yes, I know you have an appointment, but you'll come back for the discussion afterwards. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is a, uh, or maybe somebody, or you take the microphone. Our next speaker is uh, a Kalin Gologan. He has an aircraft which is also in the hall over there. It's a totally different class. It's an ultralight two seater already. Certified by the German Gulf, so uh, uh, you can fly it in Germany already. You can buy it, and uh, yeah, I'll leave the, as we are late. I'll leave the word to you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, first, a uh, short presentation of our company, Electra Solar. We are a small company. We are flying electric since 2011. We started with Electra One, one seat aircraft, which was mainly a technology platform. And uh, based on this platform, we follow our scalability, we scale this product in other products. So we use the form experience for new products. And uh, we developed, after the Electra 1, the Electra 2 Solar, a two-seat tandem aircraft with a big span, 25 meter, uh, equipped with solar cells, or, and we have also an unmanned version. Fly, we flew with this unmanned version up to 10 kilometers, completely unmanned, including start and landing. But then we realized that the market for this class is not prepared and we followed a product which is market-oriented. And this is Electra Trainer, which we present here in, uh, in the Hall A7. And is a two-seat aircraft tandem, uh, not tandem, side by side, and what we followed for this aircraft? We followed emission-free, 
not only in CO2, also in noise. The noise level demonstrated during certification is only 48 decibel, which is quite nothing. You hear the birds, but not the aircraft. Energy efficient and low operation cost. Quick question. It's, should we let the video run in the background? Or in the background, yes. yes. Background. Okay, so I speak free. In the background you can see a presentation video. And uh, low operation cost is very important. How we realize this low operation cost? Through the low operations of uh, electric power unit. Our operation cost of electric power unit, including battery and uh, current and everything, is only uh, less than 20 euros per hour. The operation cost of a Rotax engine are not less than 50 euros per hour. So the, the, cost, the user saves only through the electric power unit 30 euros per hour in operation cost. Let's make a short description. The aircraft is looking like a glider. As a, the new version we present here with long winglets has an expectation of ratio of 19, which is huge for uh, ultralight. It's like a glider. We can fly in thermi and can save generally through intelligent flying using upwinds and thermic about 20% energy. We fly horizontally with 12 kilowatt per hour, which is very less. We have a battery package of 30, useful 30 kilowatt hour battery. And uh, another important thing for us, we have a variable pitch propeller, and uh, our electric power unit is redundant. So if we have two engines, one we have two controllers and many 10 BMS. So if one something fails, one engine, one controller, one BMS, the aircraft can still fly horizontal and climb. The aircraft has a very short takeoff uh, strip, less than 200 meters. The climbing speed is uh, with continuous power uh, more than three meters per second and with full power for 30 seconds, more than 5 meters per second. And uh, what introduced now new is we have thrust reversal. Such an aircraft with a big span, like a glider, can have problems at landing on a short slips. And we need to compensate this. And we tested thrust reversal. And with thrust reversal, we sink with more than 5 meters per second. We test it also with air brakes and with thrust reversal and air brakes we have a sink rate of 10 meters per second, which is a big advantage. Uh, we have also, uh, we can tow gliders, we test it, towing glider will extend our certification, the aircraft is certified, we'll extend the certification for towing for gliders, let's say about up to 650 uh, kilogram. And, and another new thing we present this year is the loading charging technology. Our DC chargers are integrated in the aircraft. When landing on an airfield, we can charge from a normal car, type 2 AC charging station. We can charge from a three phase uh, normal plug which we find normally in, a, on, in all the airfields. And what we present now is a solar trailer. It's a trailer where we can put the aircraft. You can see inside the trailer we have another aircraft. And uh, in one, one half an hour you can uh, assemble the aircraft and fly. The trailer has a buffer battery of 32 kilowatt hour. And, uh, about 6 kilowatt peak energy send and this trailer provides for German condition about 400 self-sufficient flight hours per year with without infrastructure. We can, we can say we can open a flying school in the desert. No infrastructure completely independent. And I think this is a big advantage. And uh, from application, uh, the first idea, and the, we concentrated for 
to realize a good uh, training aircraft with the low operation costs. So, I think these are the main things. I don't want okay. to speak too much. You can come to our booth, we can explain you more, you can show you everything. And we can say that Electra Trainer is a multitasking aircraft with very low emission in noise and CO2. Okay, thank you, Khalid. And if you have any questions later, first, uh, I just want to remind you, we know at the show you don't have time to sit all the time here, so we will record it. You can see the recordings at uh, our uh, eFlight Expo YouTube channel. And I would, uh, uh, we will have some Q&A at the end of the session. Now our next presenter is an electric aircraft, Dr. Kang, from the Liaoning uh, General Aviation Academy. And you see their aircraft over there, and like Kalin's aircraft, they will fly, if weather permits, tomorrow morning. So come back at 11, and then you can see electric aircraft flying here. And they are an aircraft which has been at the Aero already several times. And they already are certified in China as LSA. And they now also want to bring the aircraft to the German market. So, Dr. Kang, word is yours. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm, my name is Guyuan Kang. I'm from China. Uh, our company name is uh, Liaoning General Aviation Academy. Uh, we uh, make electric aircraft from uh, 2011, uh, now more than uh, 10 years. Uh, we have a two-seat, uh, four-seat. Uh, electric aircraft. Uh, that's that. My topic, topic will include four sections. Uh, first is uh, our company introduction. The second part is the electric light sport aircraft certification in our company. The third part is RS4E, our full seat electric aircraft uh, airworthiness certification basis. The fourth pass is a uh, uh, full-seat electric aircraft certification, certification test. Uh, Liaoning General Aviation Academy uh, located in Shenyang, in the northeast of China, uh, Liaoning province. Uh, we founded in 2011. Uh, our target is to, to make uh, green energy, uh, general aviation, research and development. Uh, first, I will introduce you uh, our first uh, electric powered aircraft, RS1E. Uh, the specification is added in the, uh, in the table. Uh, at first, uh, its endurance is only about one hour, so it's not enough to fly uh, uh, from uh, airport to airport. So we have to uh, uh, want to increase its endurance. Uh, then we, uh, uh, first RS1E uh, get its certification, uh, uh, type certi certification and the production certification uh, in uh, about uh, 2015. Uh, since uh, the endurance is not enough, uh, then we want to uh, increase its yes, uh, uh, flight hour. Uh, first, we uh, want to uh, increase uh, another side of uh, battery, so uh, uh, the, the uh, maximum takeoff weight will increase, and also uh, the structure needs to be strengthened. At the same time, the battery technique is also increased. So, uh, finally, the endurance can be increased from one hour to uh, two and a half hour. Uh, now, uh, our electric aircraft can be uh, transferred from one uh, airport to uh, uh, not so far away, another airport. Uh, RS1E uh, uh, plus A uh, also get a certif certification. Uh, uh, now, uh, in about uh, 2018 and 2019, uh, got in TC and PC. Uh, now, uh, uh, all together, uh, 
uh, RSYE and RSYE A uh, have flight more than uh, 11,000 uh, flight hours, I think in the uh, longest uh, uh, flight hours in all electric aircraft. Uh, then we have uh, developed uh, safety, uh, also uh, fully electric. Uh, now uh, it can fly to about one and a half hour, and uh, since uh, uh, the the the, uh, the load uh, is uh, bigger than uh, uh, in the sea, in the in the uh, sea or uh, lake, uh, than the land, so the, the uh, power needs to be increased. So uh, other uh, take, take up power uh, have increased uh, to uh, 80 kilowatt. <coughs> uh, we name is uh, RSYS. Uh, it also uh, guide certified in uh, uh, 2021. Uh, uh, guide is uh, PC certified in uh, 2022. Now it has flight uh, altogether uh, 500 flight hours. Uh, another of our uh, four-seat electric aircraft, uh, uh, it can uh, have uh, it have four seat and it can fly uh, about one and a half hour. Uh, the takeoff hour power is uh, 140 kilowatt. Uh, its first uh, test flight in 2019. Uh, uh, till now, more than uh, 1,000 flight hours. Uh, we hope it can be uh, certified in the near June or July. Uh, now, uh, most of uh, ES uh, certification tests have been finished. Uh, uh, before I uh, fly uh, here, uh, uh, the tailwheel uh, test just uh, in process. Uh, after this, uh, only some uh, paperwork uh, to be finished. Uh, we have got uh, 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 our electric less spot aircraft certification for RS1E, uh, RS1E-A and RS1E-S. So in this process, we have some uh, uh, experience. The electric less spot aircraft certification, we uh, make uh, all the uh, uh, tests and the paperwork according to uh, ASTM. I think most of you uh, know uh, most of this, especially uh, F2840 uh, 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 for uh, electric procuring unit is very useful for the uh, certificate process. Uh, altogether, uh, 39 uh, EPU uh, certifications uh, test altogether, uh, including uh, the uh, vibration test, uh, calibration, uh, curve, endurance, and uh, charting uh, uh, different tests have been finished. Uh, uh, we also make a special condition uh, for RS1E, uh, lithium-ion uh, lithium batteries for electric power aircraft. It has been uh, 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 finished by, by our uh, regulation. Uh, CAAC in China. Uh, it can be uh, applicable for uh, all RSYE series, uh, the two-seat electric aircraft. Our four-seat electric, electric aircraft is uh, under process right now. Uh, we have uh, uh, it's a low-cost, uh, high-strength composite material uh, for uh, the uh, food large. Uh, the electric propelling uh, unit, including uh, motor, controller, uh, propeller, and uh, laser battery. Uh, the battery uh, energy density in uh, 300 watt hour per kilogram, I think, uh, is uh, the highest in the uh, in the in the field. Uh, the certificate basis is according to uh, uh, Part 23. Uh, uh, including uh, 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 installation, uh, propellers, cooling, uh, most uh, articles have been used for the uh, certification. We uh, also uh, have our uh, regulation system to get a uh, subhead edge 
uh, named the supplementary requirements for electric performance unit from electric aircraft uh, is uh, SC 2317 uh, uh, for uh, our four seat electric aircraft. Uh, now the test uh, including the, uh, uh, the whole EPU system uh, and also uh, for uh, electric motor uh, the uh, motor controller and also the uh, uh, battery uh, most of the test have been finished uh, including the performance test and also some uh, environment conditions test uh, have been finished uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kang. And uh, you see the aircraft there, you will see one of the aircraft flying. And we have to say one thing, this is part 23, uh, uh, light sport aircraft, but uh, there are still things to discuss on the validation on this kind of aircraft between Europe uh, with EASA and CAAC. So although they are certified in this class, you will not immediately be able to fly them here. But they are looking for this market here, and we think we really make progress over the last years. It's always in electric slower than you think. Now I have the next speaker. We go through all the classes. We had LSA, we had uh, Part 23, we had Ultralight, and we have one man who was the first who certified a glider with electric aircraft, Lange Aviation, you all know it, with the Antares. And uh, let's hear what he has to tell us. I, I think you have to... Uh, oh, I, I, I could use this. Okay. I could use this. It's easier for me. Thank you. My name is Axel Langer. I'm from Langer Aviation, SOC. And uh, our, uh, the Langer Group essentially consists of two companies. Uh, Langer Aviation develops, manufactures and distributes high-performance electric aircraft and electric drivetrain components. Lange Research Aircraft is a spin-off of Lange Aviation, which is exclusively involved in the development of fuel cell aircraft. We are located in zwei Brücken, that's here in Germany, uh, 200 kilometers far away from Frankfurt. Uh, first of all, I would like to briefly outline the history of the Lange Group, 1996, the Lange Flugzeugbau was funded with the aim of developing self-launching gliders. In 1999, our first, um, uh, first test aircraft flew fully electric, still with nickel-metal hybrid batteries from Panasonic. The maximum grade, uh, climb altitude was 1,900 meters. The purely electric flight time was 1 hour 10 minutes, including self-launch. In 2003, the world's first electric production aircraft, the Antares 20E, flew. The battery was already based on lithium ion technology from uh, the firm Saft in France. The climb altitude was 3,000 meters, and the pure electric flight time was just under two hours. In 2006, we received a other certification for the Antares 20E and also for the EA42 propulsion system consisting of, um, of motor and power electronics. The EA22 could use in motor glides and also in very light aircraft, so in normal aircraft up to 750 kilograms. In 2009, we developed the first fuel cell aircraft the Antares H2 for the German Aerospace Center. The Antares H2 was the first fuel aircraft to be able to perform complete flight entirely, entirely on the fuel cell. Uh, various fuel cell systems were installed in, in, to investigate the suitability for aviation and the maximum achieved flight time was five hours. In the years from 2006 until today, various modifications to the hardware and software of the, sixes, of the existing systems were developed and certified by the EASA. In 2016 onwards, we have been intensively involved in European research projects on the use of automotive component, components in the aviation applications. 
in 2020, we certified a charter system based extensively on automotive components. And it was according to ED79 with Design Assurance Level Charlie. So in 2024, we expect to certify our third generation battery system, Antares Red 3. Our aircraft will then have a climb altitude of 5,800 meters and 3.7 uh, hours purely electric flight time. In 2024, we also intend to complete the development of the certification of second generation power electronics. And next year, we hope we will have the maiden flight of the next fuel cell aircraft, the Antares A2. So here you can see we had um, on our fleet some experience. On our fleet we had now more than 200,000 flight hours and more than 800,000 operational hours. The difference between flight hours and operational hours is the uh, operational hours in the, are the time you use the main computer system for charging and so on. Now the interest in electric aircraft and EV tolls was fully awakened in the market. We are offering our electric propulsion components to other aircraft manufacturers. This way, not every aircraft developer has to develop its own propulsion system. On the slide, you can see propulsion components for battery electric aircraft that we had developed and that can be used in other aircrafts, battery systems, power electronics, electronic drive control system, charging devices, and intelligent safety contactors. How, how did we certify? Because every, everyone knows or should know that you can go to market only with certified products. It's nice to do first flights and so on, but at the end you must have a certification. And then you could earn some money. In front, you, you lost a lot of money. So, so we do the certification process in our company um, that, that complies with ED79 that is valid all over the world. It's good enough for EASA, also for FAA. And we do the functional hazard assessment according to RIP for 761. And the development process for the software is done according to DO178C and for the hardware DO245. And in-house we can perform some tests according to DO160. Shock, attitude, temperature. Certification basis for our product is CS23, CS32, and it seems in CSE in, in the future it will be also put at CS29. The certification com uh, process complies with the other requirements. So, we usually, we usually develop and certify our components according to Dahl C, Dahl Charlie. Why? Why is it so? In our experience, the additional costs of developing according to Dahl C are proportional to the quality of the product. You get a major product, major product for reasonable costs. The diagram shows the allocation of the necessary DAL via the classification of failure level um, versus aircraft class. And there you can see if you had a certification with DAL C, all your products, your products could be completely installed without any problem up to class 2 aircraft. That means multi engine aircraft um, less than 6,000 lips. 2.8 tons. So we could deliver directly in this aircraft, multi-engine, 2.8 tons. And if necessary for a battery system, we are able to perform a dial B, and then we can go in this class 3, that's normal nine seaters. Could happen with new battery systems, we also could deliver our battery systems in commuters because uh, the safety with the new battery systems, the safety level is higher. But we will see in this moment we are working on these four class uh, one and two applications and also for CS29. 
So there are some product examples. I only will show how it could look like if it's you produce it certified in 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 real standard. That is our battery system. It has um, certification with two times the RC, no single point of failure. So really, uh, really high level. It works with uh, 400 volts and also with 800 volts. And you could have yeah, some some different module uh, sizes. It, uh, this is the smallest module. It had 48 volts. And you could add one module after the other. And as you see, you had some, um, some batteries in it, but you also had some electronics on it. But it's really needed if you would like to achieve the safety levels you need. Uh, this is, um, you can see, it's, uh, it's uh, a battery done for one of our products. We work with 330 volts. So here you have 150 volt for one wing, and on the other wing you have also 150 volts. Uh, you also could have it for other applications in a box, if you, if you would like to have it in a box, no problem for us. And uh, that's the normal. Um, here I can show how we integrate the battery in the wing. So it is not okay, but normally we integrate our batteries in the wing, so they are very, very lightweight, could not show, but uh, you could be sure we do it in this way, we do it more than 100 times, and as you see, uh, we, the, the aircraft fly all, all over the world and it, it works. Um, we also have certified charging systems, we had a charging system certified years ago, uh, you have directly integrated in the aircraft, so you could use it at every airfield. Um, this is an AC-DC module. If you see it here, this is only for 3.3 kilowatts, but you could scale it up to 20, 20, uh, to 22 kilowatts. And uh, if you had something integrated in your aircraft, it's much, much cheaper to charge than to use DC-DC. And we also um, could have, we also could certified DC-DC, so you could charge up to 350 kilowatts. Uh, this is a power electronics, it's the smallest one we offer. It only has 50 kilo kilowatts. You also could have 250 kilowatts. It's also on a certification, certification basis. It's very easy um, to, to optimize it for your motor because the software is model-based and with a model-based software, you only have to change the parameters and then you have the new software and you can certify it in a very, in a very short way. And this goes to uh, up to 250 kilowatts without any problem, still working on a project with 650, but then you need uh, a little bit more, a little bit more powerful uh, computer. Uh, so we had fourth generation new machine interface and it's also certified and this is some, something everyone needs here. It's an, an insulation monitoring device so it shows you if your battery had a short circuit with the structure perhaps. And you need it, it's completely clear, you could use some for cars but they are not certified so I'm sure all the people here, all the firms here come to the market will buy some from us. Uh, it's not a big, big business, but it's a business. Uh, and this is an intelligent safety contactor because um, for certification, um, EASA and all the others ask for fuses. And if you have a mechanical fuse, you have a mean time between failure only from 15,000 hours. And that's really not good enough. So we use for more than 20 years intelligent safety contactors. They are not mechanical, they are fully electronical. It's certifiable up to the design assurance level Bravo B, if you want. We design uh, in this moment up to design assurance level charge. And you can use some of these in the airport. So that's all. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And I think for those who are in electric aviation, they know how important certification is. And so um, I saw, the, uh, I, I just started with you, Axel, the, the first, the, I saw you have a lot of product from the battery over the controllers to the charger. Do you also offer the motors itself or would this be adaptable to different motors? No, we, we don't do this. We had our own motor. It's too small for normal aircraft. And the problem is that everyone asks for another motor size. So, so you would be able to adapt your set to different motors. And I've seen on the module there, they are in the shape very long for fitting into the, into the wings. Uh, have you ever, as we all know, there are sometimes temperature issues. Have there ever been problems with, you know, batteries getting too hot when you have them in the wing there? No, no. What you have to do, you must have casing. If you have really a problem with, um, with a short circuit perhaps in the battery, you had to do something. And normally it's really good to, integ to integrate it in the wing because you are very lightweight. But some customers would like to integrate in the fuselage. So for this we had this box solution. Okay, uh, one question to Mr. Khan. Um, so have you already, are you already in contact with EASA for the validation of your certification? As I know, this is an LSA certification is CAAC and EASA, they are slightly different, so is there a time frame where we could say, okay, we can expect the aircraft in uh, Germany next year, in two years? Uh, we started uh, this process maybe two or three years ago, and we have finished uh, uh, some paperwork, and uh, I hope uh, we can get a certification in the coming one or two years. Okay, so um, a question for Kalin. As we've seen, your aircraft is flying because it's ultralight. Are you for, for your aircraft also considering in a later stage maybe doing another certification, let's say part 23? If you take a microphone. <laughs> yes, uh, at first we concentrate on ultralight but also trying to satisfy some higher level of certification. And we'll decide later what we'll do. If we, we want to go to EASA certification, we don't know exactly if for this model or for next model. Next model would be also two-seater or four-seater then? So we follow the scaling. Two power zero is one, Electra one. Two power one is two. Two power two. Okay. okay. Um, a question on uh, Jean on the. Uh, uh, what about the uh, the aircraft we see here last year? It was a small model. Now we have a big model. So will you come next year with a real aircraft? Sure. We're planning to uh, to fly with the, the, the this one at the end of the year. So we have to validate the entire airframe the new uh, propeller, the new engine, and we will fly first with uh, thermal. And everything is being tested right now in the uh, bench. All electric uh, hybrid is in the bench. Once we have done all the flight domain so that EASA is comfortable with what we're doing in terms of aerodynamics and the engine, huh? we will switch to full hybrid uh, you know, in 2025, mid-2025. An additional question on the, uh, as we know from the cars, your hybrid now, considering a car, would this also be a plug and play hybrid? So can you charge your battery also? Or do you always have to get the energy over by the fuel, either hydrogen or fuel? No, uh, we, you can recharge your batteries. Uh, I have to say that it's not the most efficient way, because when you go from thermal energy back to electric, you do it in the transformation that is not optimal. You would do that just because if you want uh, commercial operation not to disrupt, you know, in the evening, at night, let's say you, you have to carry a person, you know, and do a, or goods, you know. If you want to start up electric and, and, and immediately, 
you have to recharge, and so you, you can take off again all electric. Okay. Um, question to Kalin on the uh, your aircraft because last year you mentioned that you will also have different forms of the gear because this gear is a gear where glider pilots are very used to um, but normal pilots they would look for either front wheel the nose gear or a tail dragger but not a glider type uh, gear. Uh, we have two kind of aircraft, one is detectable landing gear then next one will deliver to the customer is also quite ready has a fixed landing gear. We wanted to bring the fuselage of a second one but uh, we needed one week more. The painter failed and but we are sure that the main product will be with fixed landing gear, especially for flying schools. Yeah, it, it's always like in aviation, we all know, coming to these shows, it always takes longer than you think, and normally it also takes more but money. By the pilots coming way. from gliding, perhaps will uh, prefer the retractable landing gear. What I forgot to, see, to say is that our endurance actually is 2.5 hours, and with supplementary battery is more than three hours. We demonstrated in flight a, a range more than 300 kilometers during the electrify in e trophy competition. We flew from München to Bab. Uh, question to Axel: uh, On your aircraft, uh, you have the like what we have seen over the years are the. the demonstrator aircraft for fuel cell are the Antares. Are there also any other aircraft where you work for, where you can speak about, where you have larger aircraft already flying with your technology? No, the, the biggest aircraft we have now is the Antares A2. It has 1.65 tons uh, weight, and six engines, and it's an hybrid aircraft with batteries and fuel cells. It's the biggest one we had now, and all the other things we had, we delivered to, to partners. Sometimes they have bigger aircraft. It, it seems that uh, the market is really awakened at the nine-seater class. Okay, and for this aircraft, would you consider fully electric or hybrid? For the nine-seaters? Yes. Um, and fully electric. Fully electric? Yes, so yes they, they, they thought they could fly 500 kilometers, and that would be good enough. 500 hybrid. kilometers? They saw that. We will see the battery. You, you see the development of the battery every year. The batteries are better. Next big step will come with lithium metal. And, yeah. and this aircraft, just last question here, which aircraft will fly when? I don't know. It depends don't know. on the customer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, one question on the aircraft you have here, which is a four seater with the fuel cell drive. Uh, you don't have, not fuel cell, with the, with the hydrogen, but with a combustion engine and a generator. Why did you choose this instead of the fuel cell? The way having a combustion engine with a generator instead of fuel cell? Uh, the RFAB, the now in uh, outside A4, uh, started uh, this big uh, rock. And uh, we want to uh, also make it a certification, but uh, it's not an easy work. Uh, maybe two or three years, uh, our boss uh, give us that schedule, but I think it's basically impossible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, so I think I see all of the next uh, presenters coming. So I think uh, we have had an interesting discussion here. We have recorded everything so you, those people who pass by can, and other people can see uh, and the recording. Interesting schedule maybe for you. We will see the two aircraft uh, flying and I think there is also a run-up of the hydrogen uh, outside on the um, on the pattern outside of the hangars where the hydrogen aircraft will run the engine to see how this runs with the combustion engine and like John explained his aircraft one aircraft will fly in tomorrow and it will also fly in tomorrow in the air show if God will with the, and we get light weather the, no the day after tomorrow yeah yeah sure 
Uh, oh, yeah, I'm already, I want to but go home. Ours is arriving now from France. Yeah. Right now as we speak. Yeah, okay. Good, then uh, it's fine. It's getting better, so let's hope for good weather and uh, see you soon and see you around here. Thank you. How can you receive eFly Journal? Just scan the QR code on the cover or on the promotion postcard or on the back side of the promotion postcard or type www.e-flight-journal.com in your browser and you receive the up-to-date blog site with the latest information from the world of electric flying or click on the top page and you receive the latest version of the PDF magazine either to read on your computer or cell phone directly or click on the link below and then you can download the PDF of the magazine as a offline magazine to read anywhere you want even without internet connection. Thanks and goodbye.